We Go From Hysteria to Hysteria by Dennis Prager on Town Hall, March 3rd, 2020. We go from hysteria to hysteria, and even that's not quite accurate. We now endure multiple hysterias at once. The latest, of course, is COVID-19, better known as coronavirus. In addition to China, where the virus originated, major cities in Italy and Japan are in lockdown mode. And Japan has closed all its schools. In the United States, where, as of this writing, six people, most, if not all, of whom are already ill, have died, the states of Washington, where all six deaths occurred, and Florida and the city of San Francisco have declared states of emergency. Many international domestic business conferences have been canceled, including the Google News Initiative Summit in late April in Sunnyvale, California, the Microsoft MVP Global Summit March 15th to 20th in Bellevue and Redmond, Washington, now to be an online event only, the Facebook Global Marketing Summit March 9th through 12th in San Francisco, the MWC Mobile World Congress Barcelona, billed as the largest mobile event in the world. Amazon has asked its 798,000 employees to stop all non-essential travel, both domestic and international, immediately. Meanwhile, according to Time, U.S. stocks lost nearly 12%, and $3.5 trillion was erased for U.S. listed stocks. It was the worst week for stocks since the financial crisis in October of 2008. And the yield on the 10-year Treasury note hit a record intraday low last Tuesday as coronavirus rocked risk markets and investors flooded into safe havens, according to Markets Insider. If these trends continue, the world economy is likely to enter a recession, if not a depression. Unless the coronavirus becomes a worldwide mass killer, it will be fair to say that the hysteria over coronavirus will cause much more suffering than the virus itself. All this leads to three questions. Number one, why aren't we seeing a sobered measure reaction to the virus? Number two, what has caused this hysteria? And number three, why are so many people in panic mode? Answer to question one, because people have lost all perspective. Like flu, this, like SARS and the swine flu before it, It has been given a name. Every year, tens of thousands of people die of that season's generic flu. In the 2017 to 2018 flu season, in America alone, according to the CDC, about 61,000 people died of the flu. But because that flu didn't have a special name, no one other than individuals close to those who died from the flu knows or cares about any no-name flu. In 2003, there was hysteria over SARS, which also originated in China, and which killed a total of 774 people in 29 countries. In 2009, the World Health Organization, which should be renamed the World Hysteria Organization, raised the worldwide pandemic alert level of the swine flu a variant of the H1N1 virus to phase 6, the highest alert level. According to CDC, the swine flu infected infected approximately 61 million Americans, of whom 12,269 died. To put that into perspective, also according to the CDC, the next season's flu, that of 2010, through 2011 killed about 37,000 Americans. In 2012 to 2013, 43,000 died of the flu, and as noted in 2017 and 2018, 61,000 died. The CDC's upper figure was 95,000. Answer to question two. Overwhelmingly because of the news media. 
The news media have been breathlessly reporting virtually every new diagnosis of the coronavirus 24-7. Typical of media reporting is this from Canada's most widely read newspaper, The Globe and Mail. COVID-19 spread so rapidly that one Harvard researcher has warned that 40 to 70 percent of the world's adults will be infected. But they never bother to tell you that being infected is for almost everyone not remotely life-threatening. Answer to question three. This one is perplexing. I am not certain why people panic so easy. Perhaps it is built into human nature. Perhaps it is the power of the media in to influence people. Perhaps it is because life is so easy in the modern world that people have come to expect a life without deadly illness or premature death from any cause. Perhaps it is because of the lack of perspective noted above. There are things about which people should be panicked. For example, the contempt for America and capitalism taught to a generation of young Americans from elementary school through college is worthy of panic. The extreme levels of economy collapsing debt we are irresponsibly piling onto the backs of future generations to maintain entitlements is worthy of panic. So is the premature sexualization of children, encouraging them to choose their own gender and taking five-year-olds to public libraries for drag queen story hour. But such things hardly register with most Americans. I feel awful for kids today. They are relentlessly told that global warming poses an existential threat to life on Earth. They are relentlessly told that President Donald Trump poses an existential threat to America. Though words used, for example, a few weeks ago by Frank Rich in the New York Magazine and used by the moderate Michael Bloomberg repeatedly in his speeches. And now they are told that their families had better stock up on toilet paper because only God knows when they will be able to leave their homes. It was a Democratic president who told Americans during World War II, no less, that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. He is a liberal idol in part for saying that. That is more or less exactly what Trump has been saying, yet he is an existential threat to our country. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. Hi, my name is John Brooker. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you, my beloved.